So previously I showed how to build and edit in Nuke Studio using EDLs exported in from an editing uh, application such as Adobe Premiere and then conform the edit based on a, an offline reference video. So I'm continuing the process of readying this project so all the shots that are designated for some form of visual effects intervention can be broken out into Nuke scripts. So what I'm going to be doing is a few preliminary steps to aid that entire process. Um, now it it is normal to provide the visual effects team with reference to the offline edit on a shot by shot basis. Now a great way to do this is to slice up the offline edit so the cuts align with the actual edit and then obviously include these in the new scripts as these are broken out. Now in the previous video I actually deleted the uh, the proxy from this uh, from this script so I'm, that's kind of a bit of a mistake on my part but nevertheless it allows me to reinforce the process of bringing this in. So the way that I would do this is again I'll just whip over to the conforming workspace which is going to max out the screen so I'm going to actually have to bring this back into the screen capture area like so, um, because I need to get at the set reference uh, media button uh, and to do that select my edit proxy it remembers where it was from the previous time say OK and now the reference is actually applied in there uh, so the reference clip. So this is the clip really that contains if I uh, this is contains all the proxy edit um, and it would be good to actually cut this up to match all these corresponding cuts along the timeline so that there's a reference to the proxy all the way along. Um, the problem is that that would be an incredibly tedious and time consuming task even on a project like this where there's only really about 35 cuts. Um, but imagine if this is a movie with several hundred clips that would be a real ball ache. But the good news is that Nuke Studio provides us with tools to automate that process. So. While I'm in this workspace, it should be okay to uh, to do this. I just need to right-click on my reference clip, like so, and come to Editorial, Copy Cuts, and I get this dialog. Okay, and what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to take the cuts from the reference video, which is there. No, I'm not. I'm wanting to take the cuts from uh, from the native edit number one and transfer those onto the reference. So it's going to take all the cuts from from edit V1 and it's going to pass those into this reference. So I should be OK with the rest of these sets as default. So if I click OK now and we can see what's happened in the timeline straight away. So we can see that it's actually replicated all those cuts perfectly and applied those to the proxy edit. So really, really powerful process that uh, saves a hell of a lot of time. Uh, it's an automated process. And I guess when you think about it, you know, a software like this ought to be able to provide that as an automated sequence, but it's great that it's there. So these clips can now be included in the new script or they can be distributed to, to the VFX artists on a shot by shot basis uh, so again they've got an additional source of re reference based on the offline clip um, and of course everything's correctly labeled you can see that it's transferred the shot numbers into the uh, into the reference edit as well okay and I'll conclude this video by looking at annotations these are essential communication tools for visual effects artists in a visual effects pipeline, several people might be working on any given shot, so it's really important that they know the full requirements of the shot. And even if just one person's working on one shot, you may do some work, then you might transfer to other shots or even other projects before returning to the shots days or maybe even weeks later. In such cases, annotations provide really useful aids to memory. Now, there are several ways to build annotations uh, in Nuke Studio. I'm going to focus on my preferred method. Uh, let's just sort of scrub down the timeline a little bit so that we're away from those soft effects. Well, that's interesting. I've got a, I've got a gap there.
Yeah, it must have been uh, must have been something I did when I was uh, when I was preparing this uh, this tutorial. I must have been uh, messing about with annotations and accidentally uh, dragged the wrong wrong clip. Anyway, sorry about that. So I want to get on to look at um, look at annotations now. So if we look at say if we look at say this shot. Um, there's probably going to be quite a lot going on within this shot. For example, it's, there's a possibility that we'll be wanted to replace the sky and uh, the problems that that might create with these trees, which may need to be supplemented with CG trees to get the sort of the, uh, the branches. Uh, we're going to have a CG walker standing in this kind of area that, uh, that is obviously confronting the character um, and that, that walker character is going to fire its weapon, resulting in an explosion in this area as well. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to sort of interpret into with, with the annotations. Okay, so as for applying these annotations, um, we do this by, uh, by clicking this little icon here. And when I click that, it actually opens this little annotation tool set over, over here. Okay, uh, I'll just take that into the center to uh, make the color white. Okay, so this is kind of like a subset of annotation tools. Very simple tools, but enough for us to be able to actually sort of apply some relatively meaningful annotation onto our uh, onto our shots. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to quickly show you how to apply an annotation in what I regard as an incorrect way, and then how to perform a correction in case you actually do that accidentally. Okay, so I've got this shot 22 selected here. I'm just going to come to the plus button to add an annotation. Uh, by default, it will basically be like that, which is uh, set to clip, current item. If I click new, uh, now maybe just get my text tool and say sky replacement. Um, it's not that e oops accidentally rotated it's not that easy to see in that color to be honest so I think what I'll do is I'll just quickly change the, the color to red so that we can see that okay so there is my annotation for sky replacement okay so what's actually happened here is that the annotation has been applied to the clip if we actually go into the timeline here, you can kind of see this sort of turquoise bar running across the clip. Okay, that represents, that tells us that there's an annotation on the clip. Okay, um, but it's actually impossible to edit this clip from inside this workspace, and it's impossible to remove it. So, say for example, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't want this anymore. We can't actually get at it from within this workspace. And this is why I don't particularly like this way of applying uh, annotations. So how we get at it is we have to right click on the clip, we have to come into open in and choose timeline view. That switches us over to this, uh, to this, to this, uh, this view here and we can see that within this view we have our, uh, we have our, uh, our annotation there. You can see that it's got its own little annotation uh, track and you can see that there's the there's the annotation there okay so I'm just going to I'm just going to delete that out of there and then jump back to my native edit and you can see now that it's disappeared from the uh, from from the timeline okay if I just um, if I just go back into the timeline for a second and uh, just undo that so it reappears. You can see that I can trim this inside inside this panel and I can move it around and things like that. Okay, but it isn't really very intuitive. We can't really see can't really see how this interacts with the other clips in the sequence. I may be able to just apply it, say for example I want this is where the explosion is going to be, where it reacts there, then I could maybe position it there and then add this for the explosion but again it's not diff it's not easy to see in in, um, in relation to the other clips that's one again one of the reasons why I don't like it so I'll co I'll come, I'm coming back out 
it, and I'll just close those timeline views down. I'm coming back out of this, and I'm going to show the what I think is the um, is the best way to go about this, which is to actually apply them at sequence level rather than at uh, at clip level. So again, I'm going to reapply the annotation. I'll, I'll apply the same annotation. So I'm going to come to add a new annotation, but this time I'm going to choose sequence as the add to option. I'll still keep this at uh, at current item. Uh, so I'll click new, and we can see something slightly different now. We can see that it's actually we actually have an annotations track on our sequence rather than on our clip, and we can see now that this has got our padder in there. So I can now select my text tool, click in here, and type sky replacement as before. Click out and then extend it so that it occupies the space and so on and so forth and just put it in there and that's going to be there while ever that clips there and obviously it disappears when we're off that clip. Okay, now the good thing here is that we can see that the sky is also present in this shot, in this adjoining shot, it's going to be the same sky. So what I can do is I can just quite simply just extend that out to the end of that sequence so I'm not limited to the boundaries of the clip, I don't have to replicate that effect or should I say that annotation. So let me add a new annotation for the walker, the CG walker and also for the explosion. So again I'm going to choose uh, the plus button, I'm going to create from to a sequence, again I'm going to create this as a for the current item which is the which is this clip so um, make sure it's selected and then uh, and then click new and you can see that this now stacks an annotation box over the top um, I'm just going to quickly jump into my swatch and change the color of this um, change the color of this uh, this um, swatch here making a very good job of that anyway it'll do Um, and then I'm going to get the paintbrush tool, so I'll get the paintbrush tool and I'm just going to sort of draw this kind of walker character it's a terrible choice of colour but anyway, sort of antennas sort of classic metaphor and this is my walker object I'm, I'm actually working with the mouse so this looks absolutely awful but obviously I could make a better job of that with a graphics tablet so we can see now that as an annotation goes we've got an idea about where our character is going to be placed. Now, obviously, the the uh, the shots moving around a little bit, the camera, uh, the subjects moving around a little bit, and the um, and and the the annotation stays put. That's a limitation. We can't animate that, but uh, but at least we can sort of ground these things so we can broadly frame the uh, the objects in terms of the uh, in terms of the scale and so on. That was an accident. Um, Okay, I'm just going to have to go back to the to the uh, back to the clip to actually sort of find that now. Here we are. So here are my annotations on frame 22. Okay, so one last animation. I kind of alluded to it when we were in the clip, which is that. At this particular point, he starts to react. So this could be the point, for example, where the where the walker fires its weapon. And what I want to do is emulate sort of an explosion in this area here. So I'm going to get my um, I'm going to get my color my color bar, and so I'll bring this round into um, into this sort of orange domain. Brighten that up a little bit. Okay, get my paintbrush again. So now I'm going to um, I'm going to add another one, another sequence. Again, I'm just going to select the shot and make it. Uh, um, in fact, this time I'll do it a little bit different. I'll change the range to custom. Now, at this frame, round about 226, 23, something like that. That's where the that's where we want the effect to start. So I'll just type that into the into the in range. So 226, let's go for 22. Um, and then click new and we can see that we get a new annotation but now the annotation is only in that area so I can now get my brush and I can now sort of paint in this sort of this area where the 
um, the weapon sort of fires and this is the area that it hits so you know, like that's so that now appears at that particular point and we get the reaction to that and we could even go as far as to say well that would also be it would maybe be in this area on this on this adjoin, adjoining frame so maybe what we could do is we could even take this and we could maybe extend it out so now that is actually on that clip but obviously in the wrong frame but I can still get my uh, I can still get my razor and tr and trim that and obviously now we have it in that clip uh, which so I can uh, I can basically select this effect in this particular area and bring it and bring it down here so we have the effect just there and then when we then when we move there it is okay again the camera's moving and the uh, and the annotation isn't but at least we know broadly where it should be in relation to that shot okay so the, obviously the big advantage of this approach is that the effects can be, um, can with, with, and what I mean this approach, I mean having this uh, uh, this annotations layer or track on the on the edit timeline, is that these effects can be repositioned, they can be lengthened, they can be shortened, they can be duplicated, they can be removed. We've basically got the flexibility to be able to do that intuitively from within the one edit window rather than having to go drill, drilling down into individual clips. So that's the, that's why I prefer this particular method. I'm going to wrap up here. We're 30 minutes in, uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to wrap up here. But later in this tutorial series, we'll take a look at how these annotations can be transferred into the Noob scripts themselves and act as reference to the compositor. Okay, so I hope you've found those little tips useful and that you'll be able to apply those to your own project.